Hello everyone, I'm Eddie Turner. I'm the president-elect for ATD Houston, the Association for Talent Development's Houston chapter. And at ATD Houston, it's all about talent. I'm here today with Nancy Parsons. She is the president and founder of CDR Assessments. And CDR Assessments is one of our gold sponsors for our chapter. We are so grateful to Nancy and her organization for all that they do for us uh, throughout the year as a chapter sponsor. And also she sponsors several of our conferences throughout the year. Nancy, thank you for being with me today and thank you for all that you do for us. Well, thank you, Eddie. I'm delighted to be with you today. Nancy, can you tell our audience who you are and what you do? Yes. Of course, my name is Nancy Parsons, and as you said, I'm the founder and president of CDR Assessment Group, and we were formed in 1998. And essentially what we do is we provide breakthrough assessments for leadership and talent development for global clients. And um, we've worked in every sector. Our assessments are different in a sense that they go deeper, drill deeper than most on the market. Thank you. Now, why should individuals look at your organization? Well, they should look at our organization if they really want to help their leaders and professionals develop a keen sense of self-awareness uh, so that they can develop in accurate ways, in most productive ways. It, also, our assessments can be used for a multitude of talent and HR applications uh, for coaching, team development, customized training, even for selection screening and succession planning. So it's kind of a one-stop shop, and you only have to take the assessments once. Mm -hmm. So it's really a value-add that way for an organization. And it's, you can use the data for many different applications once someone takes the assessments. That sounds very intriguing. So there are a lot of people that are in this space, a lot of organizations. What makes you different? What's the thing that they miss if they go to someone else besides CDR assessments? Well, they're going to miss the level of detail and the accuracy that we provide. Uh, in our character assessment, which gives you like the baseline, what makes a person tick, where are their strengths, what are their gifts, as well as where are their gaps, we have seven primary scales and 42 subscales mm -hmm. to give you individual differentiation. No one else matches what we do there. And on our risk assessment, we measure 11 risks and we go into great detail. We're very candid about those risks. Others may talk about ineffective coping skills, but not as directly as we do. And our last piece, the drivers and rewards, measures one's intrinsic motivators. Mm -hmm. We have 10 facets that we measure, and under each one of those, there's five sub-facets. So, for example, if someone's high driver is amusement and hedonism, uh, we have five then buckets of what is it that makes you happy? What do you like to do to satisfy that need? Um, so, again, no one matches us in in the scope and also I think the thoroughness and, and ease of use. Well, I don't know anybody else that's doing that. So folks, go visit CDR Assessments online. Nancy, where can they find you? They can find us at um, www.cdrassessmentgroup.com and our Twitter handle is at CDR underscore assessment. Check them out. We couldn't do anything without our sponsors. And so we are always excited when we have people and organizations such as Nancy Parsons and CDR Assessments backing us. So uh, one other thing, I got this wonderful gem in the mail and this book that you just wrote, Fresh Insights uh, to End the Glass Ceiling, is fascinating. And my cursory glance through it when I just got it, I couldn't wait to get it open. The first thing that jumped out was all of the stats and charts. Uh, this isn't light reading. You've really put some meat in this book. Tell us about that, if you would. Yeah, the book is essentially, it's um, about the research that we did about the glass ceiling. And what we learned was what's causing it is not what people think. So therefore, today's solutions on women and leadership initiatives just aren't working. So... Uh, the three-part research, we first looked at personality differences and by way of strength and character, both men and women are equally capable to serve as leaders. But where we found the differences were the risk factors. And what happened was there was a statistically significant difference 
for women versus men in the, in the fact that they had high warrior scores, mm -hmm. meaning that under pressure, adversity, and conflict, they tend to pull away, retreat, overanalyze, overstudy, and they have a fear maybe of speaking up because they don't want to make a mistake. What this does is it pulls them out of the limelight and the visibility, right? right. Meanwhile, the men in the study tended to be egotists, upstagers, and rule breakers. And what that translates to is aggression, pushiness, stealing the center stage, and being overly uh, pushy. But it, that also is viewed as being more courageous or leader-like, so they win the day with the promotion. Albeit they may not be as well qualified as many of the women as leaders. Well, this is fascinating reading, and I can't wait to finish uh, going through this. One thing that you talked about very early on in the book, I believe it was perhaps even in your introduction, is that this book was written for women and those that know women, which means right. all of us should read this right. book. So get a copy of this book, everyone. Nancy, thanks again for being uh, with me this morning. Thank you for all that you do for our chapter, and I look forward to seeing you very soon. Thanks, Eddie. I appreciate it. Thank you.